Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Martin with Ivy Family Health Updates, and I'm here today with my brothers, Dr. Ed Martin and Dr. John Martin, and we're going to be talking about postmenopausal hormone therapy, which I think you'd agree is one of the most remarkable stories in uh, medical history as far as being popular and unpopular, then popular and unpopular, and actually now we're back to popular again. And the story first began in the 1960s where about 50% of women in the United States were taking hormone therapy, not taking it for hot flashes or disease prevention. We were told that it would make women stay beautiful and uh, youthful forever. And then in the 1970s, we were told not to take it because it caused cancer. In the 1980s, we were told we should take it to prevent heart attacks and osteoporosis. And then in the uh, early 2000s, the Women's Health Initiative, a big trial, I think everybody remembers, it was done to prove that estrogen prevented the risk of heart disease. It showed it increased the risk of heart attacks and strokes, but it turned out it was because it was an older population, women in their 60s. And they, they did have some women in, the 50s, in their 50s in the trial, and they did not see that excess risk in those women. So we're sort of coming back full circle again that it is okay to use it in women in their you know, 40s and their 50s, and those are the women who actually have menopausal symptoms. So the bottom line here is, basically we're back on track. If you have menopausal symptoms, it's perfectly safe to take hormone therapy, estrogen therapy, because it's the gold standard if you're having hot flashes. It's the best uh, treatment for it. Now, are hot flashes the only symptom? Is that the symptom? And should every, you know, what percentage of people in the United States, for example, are going to have hot flashes? It's by far the most common symptom of the menopause. About 75 to 90 percent of women in the United States do get hot flashes. Probably about half of them ever seek intervention. Other symptoms are vaginal dryness, but you can take vaginal estrogen. Depression is very common. Just during, while you're going through this transition to menopause, it's not, it, that doesn't necessarily continue. Sleep disturbances because of hot flashes, but also uh, other sleep disturbances, they all are very responsive to estrogen. We don't, again, not for prevention of disease, just for these um, menopausal symptoms. These symptoms. Mm -hmm. Now, does it matter if the woman's had a hysterectomy and, and what kind of estrogen would be best to use? It, it makes a big difference if a woman has had a hysterectomy. If she has, she only needs estrogen. If she has an intact uterus, she has to take an estrogen and progesterone, so the regimen is a little bit more complicated. As far as do, do I think one estrogen is better than another, it's, there's not evidence to say that one is safer than the other, but my personal preference for my patients is to use natural products. These are FDA-approved natural products, and by natural I'm referring to the same estrogen structurally that the ovary makes prior to menopause, and so that's 17 beta estradiol and natural progesterone. And I tend to use now for estrogen a patch because it releases the estrogen sort of continuously over 24 hours, which is sort of the way the ovary does it versus taking a pill. Um, and uh, there's some evidence to suggest that the potential risk of having a blood clot, for example, would be even lower than taking it uh, by a pill. Now, when you say natural, you said it's the same as w that would be released by the, o um, by the ovary. Is that similar to the bioidentical hormone that people talk about? It's actually the exact same hormone that structurally the same hormones that people who are seeking the bioidentical approach are right. using, but the advantage is it, they're quality controlled. The people using the bioidentical approach are having them compounded by a compounding pharmacist. And the big disadvantage there is each time you get your hormones made, there's such variability batch to batch. You're, you just can't, there's just much okay. less re reliability. So I, I would really strongly recommend having the FDA approved okay. <laughs> variety. And how long do, do you treat these people for? I mean, do you do it for a year, two years, four years? Uh... Well, the current recommendation is to treat for less than five years because if you keep going or treating beyond that, you eventually will see an increased risk of breast cancer. But on average, hot flashes last for about four or five years. So what we do is we will treat for a couple of years and maybe try and taper and stop and see if their hot flashes are gone. If they're not, maybe treat another year and try and taper and stop. But we, we you know, really try and get women off uh, by about year five or so. Okay. And as they go off, will any hot flashes come back or are they go on oh, at that Oh, yes. <laughs> if, if they had hot flashes before, they will often have some hot flashes when they come off. Usually they're milder and they're shorter in duration, but um, uh, they, they can expect to experience some. We, but, but the sl slower you taper women off, the better they do. Oh. Any questions? No. no that's great. Kath, yeah. thank you very much. Oh, thank you.